continuing on with our scanner class, let's now, instead of just getting strings, let's get some numbers. So let's start with an integer. An example of that might be getting someone's age. So first let's ask for their age so that they know what to input, and then let's create a input. We learn normally that this would just get the next word they typed, but I want to make sure that our return value is an integer, so I'm going to type out next int. This now will open up an input for us, and whatever we type in it, if it's an integer, it will return that value. If it's not an integer, we're going to get an error. So running this, it asks for our age. We try to put a non integer value and hit enter we get this error of course but if we put the correct answer in which is any kind of integer which that is way too much and hit enter then notice it goes through perfectly so before we move on let's deal with the fact that we have a possibility of getting an error so let's make sure we don't get any errors while scanning this we can do this by using scan dot has next and has next will check to see if you actually have something to grab before you make a scan if there's nothing to scan next it's going to return false if you want to specify this though we can do has next integer or like say you can do has next double if you're looking for a double and the same down here if you're trying to get a double value you can do scan next double so scan has next int will open up an input for you to type in but it won't actually scan that value it's just going to look at it and check to see if it is an integer or not and it will return true or false depending on what you've typed in that means we can use an if statement that said okay if we have an integer in our next scan then i want to save that integer in a scan of my own so we can just move this up here and afterwards i want to display it out as well something like this now this is almost good but we have a problem here we're trying to print out to the screen the age but our age variable is only going to get set up if we have an integer here if we don't this is going to be skipped altogether this whole if statement which means our age variable is never going to be set up that's why we get this error that says we cannot find the symbol and it says the variable age so to fix this you have to make sure that age is initialized regardless of what happens in your code an easy solution would just be to put your print statement inside your if statement that way it's only going to try to display this age variable if you actually have set it up first. But if we want it to be outside of our if statement, that means this age variable also has to be outside of our if statement. While we have declared it, we haven't initialized it. As it says here, variable age might not have been initialized. So this age variable still has nothing in it. It's a null value and we can't display that out. A fix for this means that you have to have some kind of default value that age is going to resort to. So setting age to zero, an even easier solution might just be to set age to zero initially. And then if the next thing you type is an integer, then it's going to change it from zero to whatever you put. So not the greatest solution, but it still will get rid of that error. And that way, if they accidentally type something wrong, it's just going to default to be zero instead of giving you an error. What I like to do though is put the user in a loop so that they have to answer the question to move on. So to do that, let's create a while loop to put the person in while they keep typing in the wrong thing. So our condition here is going to check to see if they type in an int. If they do type in an integer, there's no need to put them in a loop, right? Because they typed in the correct thing. So we're gonna skip it all together and then set up our value down below. So I can get rid of this if statement right here. So if they don't type in an integer, then I want to go into the loop. So we're gonna do an exclamation point, which reverses what this checks for. So now this is checking for anything but an integer. If they type in anything but an integer, then I'm gonna put them in a loop here. Now remember, has next creates an input for the person, but it doesn't actually scan the item in it. It looks at it and sees what it is, and then returns a true or false value. But if you don't actually make a scan, then it's never going to move past that item. So instead of trying to explain this, I'm just going to type this out. So what this is gonna do is if it's not an integer, then we're just going to scan through it 
and then go back up around and check again. If it is an integer, then it's going to skip this while loop and the next scan we make is now going to be actually saved, whereas the scans in here are just used to get to the next item. So now we run this, this has next integer opens up an input for us. We type in an answer, we hit enter on that, that returns back true. This exclamation makes that statement false, so we skip over the while loop and immediately scan that next item into this age. If we run this again though, and we try to put words in here and hit enter, now notice it scans that next item, throws it away, and then loops back up and basically runs this condition again. So now we can try again. We hit enter, no go, enter in a digit, and as soon as we do, it breaks out of our loop. So this is working perfectly. The last thing I would add is a print statement inside our while loop that basically asks the user to try again. So I'm gonna say only integers allowed and to try again. Now if we don't type in an integer and we try to hit enter, it's going to say only integer, integers allowed and then to try again, which of course, once we do, it will continue on with our code. So that is how to deal with the primitive data types. Like say you can change this to double to get a double if you wanted to, as well as your has next can be changed to look for a double. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.